In this episode of the online classroom, we're looking at the system boundary chart, also known as the model boundary chart. This is part of the preliminary system design topic in looking at our straightforward problem of keeping a lawn neat. The system boundary chart is a structured way of brainstorming the important and excluded aspects of your system. This is really important because it helps to tell the design and the client which parts of the problem you're including in your system and which parts you're excluding. The key terms in this topic are endogenous, which is internal to the system. So these are things that you would put inside your system boundary. Exogenous, these are things that are external to the system. So these are likely to be the inputs to your particular system. And excluded, so these are things that are outside the system and you're excluding them from consideration. This is often referred to also as things that are outside the scope of your solution. For the purposes of this online classroom, we're going to use the terms internal rather than endogenous, external rather than exogenous, and outside rather than excluded. This will hopefully make the classification a bit more clear. The construction of the system boundary chart is relatively straightforward. First, we have an internal column, and these are all aspects that we think might be included inside the system boundary. So I've got here for my lawnmower example, the cutting system, the locomotion, so I'm describing this as how the, the mower moves, safety, the chassis, the handle, power, and the controls. These are all things that I think will be inside my system boundary. Second, we have the external column. So these are things that are likely to be inputs to my internal system. Here I've got things like grass and other likely debris, fuel, power, because I'm not sure how I'm going to power the device yet. Uh, the user is an external input, because I'm expecting that they will provide some sort of locomotion power or perhaps even just control information. And the length of the grass is something that's external to the system. And lastly, things that are considered outside the scope of my system are things that I can't really control. Things like the price of the fuel, the energy of the user, maybe the type of grass, unlikely debris, so I'm hoping that the user might not use the lawnmower to chop down trees. The weather, temperature, moisture, all these sorts of things are things that I consider outside of my system boundary. So they're actually outside the scope of my problem. By actually listing these things, it's making that very explicit. There we have it, a completed system boundary chart with our internal, external and outside the scope categories and the things that are listed inside. Notice some things are at different scales, so perhaps the cutting system is made up of a number of different components, uh, whereas grass is unlikely to be made up of a number of different components. Key ideas from this topic is that the system boundary chart is a structured way of brainstorming what should be where in your system and that these elements now directly feed into your functional block diagram also known as the system interface which will be the topic of the next online classroom. Make sure that you do the reading that's available on the public website and the self-tests which are available on Waddle. See you next time.